Hello and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I am on large day below. Remember, you can watch this broadcast live on our website, nta.ng slash live, and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen. And let's start from the State House, where President Bola Tinubu has commended members of the armed forces for the progressive success been recorded in the fight against insecurity in parts of the country. It was at the launch of the 2024 Armed Forces Remembrance Day celebration album appeal at the State House. No matter what economic theory we propagate or postulate, if we have no security, you cannot promote peace and development. I'm grateful to all of you on behalf of the country. <laughs> to you all, we have to continue to strive to eliminate conflict in our country, to eliminate terrorism, banditry, and make priority the stability of this country. The emblem we will unveil today symbolizes our commitment to honor the fallen heroes and support those who continue to serve. I want to, therefore, highlight that their sacrifice and entire efforts at keeping Nigeria safe are perfectly aligned with President's promise to conquer all forms of insecurity in Nigeria. We therefore come together annually to reflect on the sacrifices of our armed forces to our nation and express our unwavering gratitude. Climate change continues to put pressure on food production, economy and livelihoods, but there is an aspect of this impact that is worrying advocates in Nigeria. It is climate security financing and its operationalization. President Bola Tinubu, in an address to the 2024 Made in Climate Security Summit in Abuja, says Nigeria's ambitious action plan and the expanded presidential CNG initiative are all efforts geared towards providing pathways to mobilizing green financing for adaptation and resilience. Charles Alpha reports. So many financial commitments have been made at global level, yet there are those who think it is not enough given the extent to which climate change is rapidly impacting every aspect of human existence and why Nigeria must have climate change fund that warehouses investment to deal with insecurity, poverty, displacement and food shortages. The law provides for the establishment of the climate change fund, but we are yet to operationalize this fund. And this fund is critical for us as a country. President Bola Tinubu in an address to the summit delivered by the Minister of no Regional excuses. Development, Abubakar Momo said, commitments are not enough to drive carbon investment. We must also streamline regulatory processes, promote innovative green financing mechanisms, develop and implement uh, climate solutions. Our collaborative efforts through the mentioned initiatives demonstrate that together we can build resilience. The NCC. If there is need to fine-tune the governance mechanism through an appropriate legislation, the National Assembly is there. I dare say that there, there is a likelihood of Nigeria being able to mobilize up to 300 million USD once we operationalize the climate change fund. The summit will deep dive into other areas like energy, food security, as well as examine impacts of climate change on health. Charles Alpha. News. To the National Assembly, Senators approved the reimbursement of 15.1 billion Naira through promissory notes to Kebi State Government. Also approved as requested by President Tinubu is the reimbursement of 9.5 billion Naira to Nasarawa State Government. The reimbursements are for projects constructed by the two states. The projects after 
are the Sa Amadou Bello International Airport in Berlin Kebi and the Kago Airport in Lafia. Meanwhile, the special advisor to the President and National Assembly Martyrs Senate, Bashir Lado, has in a statement said the screening of ministerial nominees earlier scheduled for today has been postponed to Wednesday this week. The House of Representatives has asked its Committee on Ethics and Privileges to investigate within two weeks the incident of alleged assault on the cab operator by a member of the House, Alex Equeje, raising a point of order on the need to address the issue. Ha Leader of the House, Julius Nwanvere, describes the incident as a dent on the collective image of the House of Representatives. Despite an apology from Representatives Equeje, lawmakers voted to apply the rules of the House as it concerns misconduct by a member. A one-day orientation for stakeholders and validation and approval of reviewed school improvement plans for junior and senior secondary schools. Under the Adolescent Girls Initiative for Leadership, Adel has commenced in Sokoto State. The program, a collaboration between the federal and Sokoto State government, with the support of the World Bank, Delhato Abdullahi reports. More than 200 schools are to be renovated and over 50 new ones to be constructed under the Agile project across the 23 local government areas of Sokoto State. This exercise is to validate and approve work plans by experts and ensure provision of all wash facilities for conducive teaching and learning environment in the selected schools. So for this year, we are going to have small and medium grant interventions. And this will be in about 240 something schools in Sokoto State. Then the engineer will assess again and see how the work will be in each school. Sokoto State Commissioner for Basic and Secondary Education, Muhammad Tukur Al Ali, represented by Executive Secretary, Female Education Board. Professor Mustafa Namaka describes the project as timely. Having these uh, facilities avail readily available in our schools, I believe those who have withdrawn from schools due to lack of these facilities will certainly get back to schools and they will be returned. Participants express confidence that the program will improve enrollment and educational development in the state. In Sakwato, Dalhatu Abdullahi, NTA News. We are being joined live by Lawali Salihu Sabumbarini, who is currently at Yaya Abdul Karim Model Primary School in Sokoto Metropolis, one of the benefiting schools. Lawali, can you update us on the performance of this initiative expected uh, to promote the well being and leadership among adolescent girls in Sokoto State? Good afternoon and welcome to Sokoto, the seat of the Caliphate. Uh, Agile projects, one of the, I mean, Sokoto State is one of the 17 benefiting states in the north, out of 18 states across the country. And uh, the, 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 the project is aimed at improving girls' education across the state, in which Sokoto is inclusive. And uh, with me here, a state project coordinator, Dr. Mansour Isa Buhari, who will shed more lights on the projects. Here in Sokoto State. Now, Doctor, so far, what are the success stories for this project Agile here in Sokoto State? Well, Agile is just uh, has just started implementing in Sokoto State. We started implementing in August, uh, end of July, August 2024, and within this period of time, we have been able to identify communities that need urgent intervention in terms of infrastructure. Um, so far, we have identified um, 58 new communities that need junior and senior secondary schools, and they are going to be built as soon as possible. In fact, we have reached advanced stage of preparation for the start of the work. Mm -hmm. Also, we have been able to identify schools that need innovation. Now, Agile, Agile's intervention is in the area of girl education. So all the schools in Sokoto State, secondary schools that are attended by, by girls will be renovated by Agile. 
and we are going to start with immediately looking at watch facilities uh, and then we move on to classes and then we move on to, mm -hmm. to other parts of the school mm -hmm. so that by the end of the project all schools that are attended by young girls in Sokoto State mm -hmm. will have been renovated. Mm -hmm. So far we are targeting 448 schools mm -hmm. uh, depending on the category of their needs. Mm -hmm. That is why they are in grants. Mm -hmm. Also we have so far started capturing data for conditional cash transfer mm -hmm. and we expect we, we are targeting 56,000 girls to benefit from from the financial incentive mm -hmm. of the project so that mm -hmm. so that uh, mm -hmm. poorest of the poorest households will be mm -hmm. will be given assistance to mm -hmm. allow their girl child to continue to mm -hmm. go to school and mm -hmm. to encourage enrollment and so far mm -hmm. we are overwhelmed by the kind of mm -hmm. enrollment we are seeing so far from parents mm -hmm. we were in a school where there were just about 15 girls mm -hmm. before Ajal came so mm -hmm. with the current CCT enrollment people are coming in hundreds and, and enrolling their ki their, mm. their their girl children which mm. is an, a, a clear indication that the project is going to definitely uh, encourage more enrollment of, of mm. young girls in our schools mm. before the end of the project now uh, doctor how do you see the project in Sokoto that the rural areas now maybe in your early explanation you said you have gone around the state now now what is the reaction of the people at the grassroots as regards to this project to their girls well, it is overwhelming because we never thought the project would have, would have this kind of acceptability. Uh, we went around some, in fact, even tomorrow we are going to some other local governments to engage the community. Mm -hmm. And people are happy because this is the first project that is going to intervene in infrastructural mm -hmm. development of our schools mm -hmm. in the 23 local governments of Sokoto mm -hmm. State. Mm -hmm. and people are anxious for us to even start work. Mm. We are welcome to wherever we go. People mm. are happy that we're going to intervene in. Mm. And in fact, as, as you are, we are now in a school that we are studying to see what also their needs are so that they can benefit mm. from this intervention. Mm. So the acceptance from people mm. is marvelous because people have, have begun to understand that, of course, this project is going to assist in improving the standard of and quality of education, not only in Sokoto State, but in Nigeria particularly. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Thank, you, Thank so you so much. much. Thank you. Now, that is so much you can take from us here in Sokoto. Back to your studio. Many thanks, uh, Lawali Sali, who are correspondents there from Sokoto, keeping us up to speed with the Agile Initiative. And from Sokoto, let's head straight to the Center of Excellence where Adiola is standing by for more reports on Nationwide. Adiola. Thank you, Olajide. As a way of promoting cleaner, greener and healthier environment, secondary school students in Lagos are beginning to take action to protect the earth for human survival. They are passionate about preserving the environment through everyday simple behavior. Diana Ajale reports. It is true that people are displaced across the world. In Africa alone, it is projected by about 50 million or so will be displaced by 2050. But that does not mean we cannot do what's necessary now. Adaptation and adoption of strategies towards climate change mitigation, environmentalists insist, are key to reducing climate crisis. In recent times, we've been experiencing floods. Um, Bornu State had an incident. And um, little actions like this, speaking to the children and changing their mindset to let them know that they can do something about climate issues and the crisis that is going on, I think is a, is a right step in the right direction. Aspiring climate change advocate, Etimbok Friday, an SS3 student, has been adding his voice towards combating the effects of climate change for some time now. Like a drop of water, his little contributions are beginning to impact his immediate environment, including his schoolmates. Stand up for a change. Stand up for a change. And be the champion that you are. And be the champion that you are. We should put our actions at the forefront of saving uh, the earth, because the earth is earth. When you see young children around, you see they are very, very enthusiastic. They want to engage more in activities if you bring it in a fun way. And when we encourage young children or young individuals, yes, we are um, investing more in our future. This tree planting exercise within the school premises 
is to encourage and promote eco-friendly environment. We have so many cancer issues coming up and these are the results of chemicals that we use in planting trees. Food waste generated from our vegetables, from all those items, all those fruits that are spoiled that we usually throw away. So we advise them now to turn it into compost. Continuous public education concerned persons say are key to curbing the devastating effects of climate change. In Lagos, Diana Ajale, NTA News. Just a way to get the young ones involved. Now, promoting advanced recycling that can drive demand for plastic waste as a value-fed stock is imperative, particularly as plastic waste offers incentives for secular economy. Again, Dan Ajali, who interacted with some environmentalists and concerned stakeholders in Lagos, completes the report. Yes, is never a waste until we waste it. This quote is the best way to capture the case of plastic pollution. There are many ways, for example, to reuse discarded plastic bottles, apart from mechanical recycling. It's not just plastics that can be recycled. Aluminum cans can be recycled. Glass bottles can also be recycled. And that would also, um, you know, reduce the amount of resources being taken up from the environment. Reports by the United Nations Environment Program shows that Nigeria, with an estimated 32 million tons of solid waste generated annually, is among the top 20 nations that contribute 83% of the total volume of land-based plastic waste globally. How can the nation's circular economy benefit from the conversion of these huge solid waste? Nigeria has de developed a roadmap for circular economy uh, movement, uh, changing from linear economy to circular economy by 2050. The roadmap was launched earlier this year, and one of the key areas that was mentioned in that uh, circular economy roadmap is waste management. Nigeria is on course. Uh, if we decide to join the rest of the world in doing this transition. But this transition it has to be just uh, for it to be impactful. Uh, so we need a lot of education of Nigerians on what the initiative is all about. Key players believe adoption of methodology for total recycling of plastic will not only add to the nation's economic growth, but also reduce plastic pollution while encouraging environmental protection. In Lagos, Diana Ajale, NTA News. And those are stories from Lagos. Nationwide will continue in our Kaduna Network Center after this break. In Lagos, in Kaduna, 10,000 hearing aids have been earmarked for free distribution to people with hearing disability in Kaduna State by the Oliseguno Basanjo Foundation. Hafsa Daboka reported the gesture. It's in collaboration with State K Hearing Foundation. According to statistics, 7% of males and 5% of females are experiencing hearing loss, with children having their share of 1.9% in Kaduna State. Ahmed Balarabi, a civil servant in Kaduna, is among the lucky beneficiaries of the hearing interventions. After 10 years of suffering from hearing loss in one of his ears, Sukkot finally comes his way. Actually, I'm happy with the foundation because without uh, wasting much time, uh, they attended to me and when I complained to them, and then they gave me this aid. And then the help of this hearing aid I can now hear fully. Same with Husseini Abba, who cannot speak due to his hearing disability. His mother came with him all the way from Casino State for the intervention. We came and we were attended to as his ears were clean, but we have not been lucky with hearing aid. The Lushegun Opasanjo Foundation and Starke Hearing Intervention Program, slated for 23rd to 26th October 2024, has rounded off with more persons looking for more opportunities to save their ears. Hafsat Abubakar, NTA News. The Nigerian Air Force has reiterated its personnel readiness to bring to an end the insecurity felt in the entire country to safeguard the territorial integrity of Nigeria. Haruna Muhammad reported that this was during the mental and physical exercise 
at the fourth quarter joint route match of the Nigerian Air Force held here in Kaduna State. A report. The exercise brought together personnel from various math units in Kaduna showcasing their prowesses. The route march covered extensive grounds with personnel moving in coordinated formation through designated areas within the NAF base. The aim is to enhance physical fitness, discipline and morale among troops, reinforcing their readiness for national defense duties. We are engaged far and wide in operations across the nation and uh, the, the readiness of a soldier is fitness and training. Air Vice Marshal Sani Rabi, Commandant Nigerian Air Force Institute of Technology, emphasized the importance of mental and physical fitness for mission readiness of all. Like this, and to ensure that we remain fit for our constitutional responsibilities, so that whenever we are called on to participate in any operation, we should be on that ready. The exercise underscores the Nigerian Air Force's commitment to high standards of operational readiness across all ranks, which is a critical aspect of its national defense capabilities. <laughs> Haruna Mohammed, NTA News. And that's our contributions from Kaduna Olajide Bello. We take it off from here in our Abuja studio. Good evening, Olajide. Good evening, and uh, many thanks, uh, Mohammed. Meanwhile, in a decisive operation, the Nigerian Air Force airstrikes eliminated scores of Boko Haram terrorists at two key locations in Abula Marwa, Orono State. A statement by the Director of Public Relations and Information, Air Commodore Olushola Akimboewa, notes that having identified Bula Marwa as a high-level meeting site for Boko Haram's notorious figures, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance missions further confirmed heightened terrorist activity, revealing an influx of motorcycles and gatherings of combatants across the site. Consequently, enough fighter jets were dispatched to the location for an air interdiction mission. The first airstrike was executed effectively, engaging the target area, while moments later, ISR aircraft loitered in the vicinity observed several terrorists returning to assess the damage and evacuate their wounded combatants. In response, NAF air assets conducted follow-up strikes, neutralizing additional terrorists. Building on the successes of the initial mission, additional ISR was conducted in the area the same day, identifying another group of terrorists gathering under a large tree at the second meeting site. And upon verification, NAF air assets launched a precision airstrike on this location, achieving a direct hit and neutralizing numerous terrorists. These air operations struck a significant blow to planned terrorist activities, taking out multiple fighters and demolishing their motorcycles, thereby crippling their ability to launch ambushes or other hostile actions. The NAF remains committed to executing its mission with relentless precision, whether in joint or independent operations, to bring to an end terrorism as well as other threats to the sovereignty and security of the nation. The federal government, through the Nigeria Police Trust Fund, is enhancing the capacity of officers and men of the force in peace, conflict resolution and psychological development for improved service delivery. Francis from reports. The challenges law enforcement agencies face in the course of their duty currently are evolving from tackling organized crime to navigating the complexities of community policing. This, the executive secretary of the Nigeria Police Trust Fund, believes personnel must constantly be equipped with the knowledge, tools, and skills needed to stay ahead. This training is therefore imperative. This program has been designed with your growth in mind. We are not just equipping you with technical skills, but also nurturing leadership, critical thinking, and resilience. These are qualities that will help each and every one of you to rise to the demands of the modern day policing and public safety.
The Executive Secretary says the Police Trust Fund is committed to ensuring that the force has the support and resources needed to succeed in the discharge of their responsibilities. Francis from NTA News. A time now to join Anne Willy in Benin for more reports of Nationwide. Anne Willy, take it up from here. Large day is Udragobon from Benin. Now, due to the increasing cases of human trafficking using the social media to traffic youths and children, as well as the trend of organ harvest, there is need to constantly draw the attention of parents and guardians to the dangers of irregular migration and human trafficking, so as to check activities of their using smartphones. This is why the National Agency for Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, in collaboration with African Youth Road Foundation, is in Oba Market, Benin, to sensitize the public to the dangers of embarking on illegal migration. Eugenia Dubisi reports. Over the years, the issue of illegal migration and trafficking in persons have contributed to loss of lives and other inhuman treatment meted to many Nigerian youth by their exploiters while trying to travel in search of greener pastures. So encourage the youth to always make the right choice while planning to migrate. They need to be more informed, especially with the new trend of trafficking children using social media. The one who is now is the one who they call organ harvest. That organ harvest, they go carry our children. They will go come out their liver, their kidney, sell them. When they sell them, they take a neck now. We are talking about the dangers of uh, irregular migration and trafficking in persons, how it has destroyed the society. And we are saying no to trafficking and no to irregular migration. Some residents also speak on the importance of youth to be meaningfully engaged to avoid falling into the hands of human traffickers. So I believe they should work hard, learn a trade, or go to school, or find something to you so you can get power yourself. We also need to say, stigmatizing people when they traffic call night bad pass. Discriminating them night bad pass. Flyers were distributed to the traders and others. It is their expectation that members of the public will be better informed and educated. In Benin, Eugenia MDBC, NTA News. 300 widows and 100 orphans have been empowered by the wife of Ekite State Governor, Dr. Olayemi Oyebanji. The event is aimed at putting a smile on the faces of the vulnerable in the state as her husband celebrates second year in office. Oluke Misoni has that story. The wife of the governor, Dr. Olayemi Oyebanji, through the PET project, awarded scholarship to 50 puppies from primary schools to university level. Checks of 100,000 naira each were presented to 50 undergraduates selected from both the state and federal institutions in the state, while over 300 widows and orphans were given working tools they would need to fend for themselves. She explained that the initiative is to complement the effort and vision of her husband to reduce poverty among women and children and empower them to live more independent and fulfilling lives. We train 200 people, including 50 widows, active months, uh, from South and from Nigeria, from Nigeria, 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 Governor Oyebanji commended his wife for her generosity and commitment to uplifting the less privileged. An orphan, the less privileged, people with disabilities, you can adopt one or two and assist them. That is when you can make it back. The beneficiaries thank the wife of the governor for giving them a sense of belonging. To assist movements while monitoring the beneficiaries, a Hilux van was presented to World Foundation in Adwekiti, Olukemi, Sony, NCA News. And that's it from Benin. Nationwide continues from Just Studio. What well, that will be after the break. Please stay tuned. To Joss. 
The National Space Research and Development Agency is keen into space technology through the very long baseline interferometry project under the Center for Geodesy and Geodynamics in Toro State, Toro Bauchi State. The Director of Media and Corporate Communication, NASDRA, Dr. Felix Ali, stated this in Toro while assessing facilities for the takeoff of the project. Ijoma Ozomina reports. National Space Research and Development Agency is mapping out strategy to ensure successful implementation of Nigerian space program for socioeconomic development. The Center for Geodesy and Geodynamics is one of the activity centers of the National Space Research and Development Agency, saddled with the responsibility of monitoring seismic activities such as earth tremor. This is what informed the engagement at the Center for Geodesy and Geodynamics, which is a step towards actualizing this dream through the very long baseline interferometry, a multi-million dollar project in collaboration with Chinese counterparts. Uh, with this project that is coming up, the Center for Geodesy and Geodynamics, and by extension, the National Space Agency will have the capability to track satellites, even from Toro Station here. The aim and objective of this center is actually to carry out Head observation using uh, space geodetic and geophysical equipment for sustainable national development. For the people of Toro community, it is a landmark achievement as the CGG has placed the community on global map. Secondly, uh, our children at least, they will employ them. Having toured the facilities for assessment, the Director of Media and Corporate Communication, Nasrida, commended the feats achieved so far by the Centre, highlighting the benefits the country stands to gain. We are what of uh, what earthquake has done in so many advanced countries. And if we now have a Centre that could monitor and also come up at the appropriate time to tell us what to do in order to mitigate the first, you will now know that, look, Nigeria is now in a vantage position to call whatever uh, effect such a disaster will have for us. In Jos, Ijoma Ozemina, NTA News. A non-governmental organization, First Samaritan Love Foundation, says peace is a major tool in addressing food insecurity in Nigeria. The executive director of the foundation, Takalis Daspan, stated this while distributing food to residents of Jos. Indiang and Abagyang reports. The exercise tagged Food Peace Drive is the second in the series. The essence is to put smiles on the faces of those who can hardly afford a meal. Today we are distributing food free to people and um, during the process we are still telling them to live in peace and harmony with one another. Regardless of the fact, um, the situation we find ourselves, Nigeria is one of the best countries in the whole wide world and that is why we are contributing our quarter towards the the profound solution of what we call zero hunger. The foundation is appealing to good-spirited individuals and groups to emulate the foundation as government alone cannot shoulder such responsibility. Today, we are exhibiting love. Love is not just a word, but it's a doing word. And that is why today, as First Samaritan Law Foundation, we have um, um, come in mass to distribute at least 1,500 meals for people around to be able to benefit. And with this, I will tell you out there that we should show love to one another, and that is our motto. The exercise was carried out in different parts of the state capital as beneficiaries commend the foundation for the gesture. First Samaritan Love Foundation has peace advocacy and empowerment as its major objective in Jos. Indenyan and Abagyang, NTA News. That's our contribution from JOS. Nationwide continues with Olajide in Abuja. Many thanks, Bill Kisu. And uh, moving on. Beyond being a reading room or social center where intellectual heritage is preserved, the National Library is set to roll out the drums as it turns 60, preserving cultures and promoting literacy. Elizabeth Amora reports that the management of the Learning Institute visited the management of the NTA to solicit support for the celebration. The National Library, established by government as the nation's preeminent repository of information for 60 years, has been collecting published and unpublished materials by Nigerians, making it available for readers in both physical 
and digital platforms through the National Virtual Library. Having promoted education, disseminated information, provided means of individual self-development, and met other bibliographic needs for 60 years, it's time to celebrate commitment to posterity. In this visit, is to thank the management of NCA for its unflinching support over the years and acquaint the management of its Diamond Jubilee celebration. We have to preserve these resources that apprise the heritage of the country. We are digitizing the weak ones and putting them in, in the National Repository of Nigeria, which could be assessed by anybody, anywhere. The Director General, NCA, represented by the Executive Director News, Ayo Adewi, assured the CEO now, of the National Library of a firm partnership to promote literacy and success of the forthcoming events. NTA on its own, it is, it's, it's a library on its own, a resource for broadcast content and history of Nigeria. If we are going to work stronger in our partnership in promoting and projecting your values, just like we have been doing. Activities lined up for the celebration is built from the 14th to 20th of November, 2024. Elizabeth Omori, NTU News. Inclusivity, open door policy, and consolidation on the efforts of past leaders will be the priority of Iman Suleiman as she takes over the baton of leadership as the new Minister of Women Affairs. Gender correspondent Momso Damian Dati reports that the new sheriff has already hit the ground running. Staffers of the ministry, leaders of various women groups, and organizations express their expectations. Nigerian women are saying that they have competences for governance, they have competences in professionals, they have competences around. It should be 50-50 for all of us so that we can have an accelerated development where everyone matters. We deal with the institution, not the individuals, but the individuals make the institution. Uh, we believe Mr. President has done the right thing, bringing someone who understands gender issues. To hit the ground running, she's just a round peg in a round hole. We're all expecting that the mistakes that have been made in the past will be corrected. To contribute to women empowerment in Nigeria. No woman will be left behind, the new minister promises. For Mr. President, it's, imp it's very important that, the, that there's development for the women, there's prosperity for the women, there's peace. That working together, we'll be able to achieve the renewed hope agenda for every woman and every child and man. Momso Damien Ati, NT News. Chairman of the Dangote Group, Aliko Dangote, is insisting that his refinery, currently with 420 barrels per day, refining capacity is ready to satisfy the local demand of petroleum products, particularly petrol. The Nigerian captain of industry was fielding questions from State House correspondent on the development in the oil and gas sector. After the commissioning of the largest refinery in Africa, there have been issues delaying disbursement of products from the refinery. However, Dangote appeals to local marketers to come forth and patronize his refinery as a way to solve scarcity of petrol in parts of the country. We are producers. I have a refinery. I'm not in the business of retail. If I'm in the business of retail, then you hold me responsible. But what I'm saying is that the retailers should please come forward and pick. If they don't come forward and pick, what do you want me to do? That's nothing that I can do. So I am expecting either NNPC or the marketers to stop importing. They should come and collect. We have what they need. And, uh, you know, as they remove, I will be pumping. I don't know whether you understand what it takes to keep half a billion liters inside our tank. It's costing me money. Every day, if I will be able to collect the Naira, I can actually charge somebody 32% in interest. So right now, that's what I'm losing. And you are talking about 500 billion. You know, I mean, we don't print money, but the issue is that if they come and collect, then you will not see any queues in the filling stations. We have what it takes for them to come and collect. We are not retailers. We also don't have trucks to send. 
we have a factory where, where we can load. If they come and pick, they will go and distribute. And they've been doing that with importation. So if they have been doing that with the importation, if it's true they are doing 55 million, I see no reason why they won't come and collect their own and distribute. On day one of a two-day performance contract retreat, the Minister of Interior challenges his team to aim high with the signing set for day two, a moment that will seal their promise to deliver. Victor Wazu was, at, was there for NTA. It's the beginning of a two-day retreat. More than a gathering, it's a moment to chart a new course. Heads of paramilitary agencies within the Ministry of Interior are tasked with preparing to sign a performance contract on day two. But today, the groundwork is laid. Today's gathering is more than a contract signing ceremony. It is a covenant of accountability and a promise to deliver Mr. President's renewed hope agenda. With top management in attendance, the retreat aims to set a bold agenda, focusing on measurable targets and results. Day two will see the official signing, turning plans into promises and promises into actions. You've done well, but you can do better. And I think this is what this retreat is all about. This is a time for us to be very bold, to be very ambitious, but tenacious. As these leaders prepare to put pen to paper on day two, the real challenge will be turning their vision into action, ensuring that promises made today are results delivered tomorrow. In Abuja, Victor Azu News. In a digital age where security meets innovation, a new chapter unfolds at the heart of Nigeria's borders. A select group of Nigeria Immigration Service officers stand ready to shape the future of border control. Victor Azu reports that the message of the Minister of Interior was on vigilance, duty and the promise of a safer tomorrow. Selected from more than 200 candidates, these officers of the Nigeria Immigration Service have undergone rigorous training in API PNR technology advanced passenger information and passenger name record, that is. It's a system that analyzes data from travelers before they even set foot in the country, helping to identify potential risks and improve border management. The large responsibility is on you now. The confidence that's been given to you, you have to justify it. From digital gates in Abuja to bustling ports of Lagos, the command and control center monitors every move. The Minister of Interior, Olubomi Tunjojo, is therefore calling on the personnel to be alert as each data point is a story, a potential threat or a chance to make travel safer. This is a scheme where there is no margin for error. This is a scheme where you cannot guess work. This is a scheme where you have to be mentally alert and you have to be ready to sacrifice all for the sake of our fatherland. As the nation's security landscape evolves, these officers of the Nigeria Immigration Service stand as the vanguard of a new era where data is the key and vigilance is the watchword. In Abuja, Victor Azu NTA News. And the people of the Sene community in Yenagua local government area of Biosa State are soliciting for urgent intervention to assist them contend with the ravaging flood situation facing them as they are already counting their losses. Doris Akumoye reports. The Sene community is one of the Biosa State border community with River States. This community, among other communities in Barossa State, is presently being challenged by the devastating effect of flood. A visit to the oil-rich community shows the impact of the flood to both human, farmland, access roads and houses. The flood investigation reveals it's largely as a result of the overflow of the River Niger from the Mbiama Axis forcing natives and non-natives to flee from the community while others have taken refuge by the roadside. His Royal Highness King Agule Debekeme is also affected by the natural disasters displacement. Over the years, we have suffered this natural flood disaster that has been salvaging this kingdom annually. Since the farmlands were equally not spared, 
most of the farmers who smartly enough hurriedly harvested their crops, while a major chunk of the produce has been washed away. A flood don't pass me. Now I want to die. My legs themselves, they pay and they pain me. It has affected us mentally and otherwise. But I've not eaten since morning. I just want to make sure that I don't lost my crops. Already, the community can only be assessed through Kenu and the cost of commodities have increased. In Yenegoa, Doris Akomoye, NTA News. Now let's join our sport desk for a sports update. The second leg of the international friendly match between Super Falcons of Nigeria and the Green Ladies of Algeria has been played. The Falcons took the lead, but Algeria scored after losing a spot kick to the advantage in the first half. And from the Wafu B under 20 tournament in Lome, Togo, Nigeria's fine Eagles will attempt to return the trophy the team won two years ago when the team takes on arch rivals Ghana's Black Satellite in the final match. Still on football. Following the emergence of Manchester City's Rodri as winner of the Ballon d'Or, Nigerian international and Atlanta striker Ademola Lukma looks set for the CAF African Football of the Year 2024 after he emerged as the 14th overall best player of the 2024 Ballon d'Or rankings at a ceremony organized by the French magazine France Football in collaboration with UEFA. Luxman's position makes him the highest ranked African player on this year's prestigious list. That as further increases uh, the chances of Ademola uh, Luxman winning the next uh, African player of the year. He has done very well for his club Atlanta, helping them to Europa Cup or, or sure, Triumph and also helping Nigeria to second place in Africa. Because with all the goals, with all the individual performances of Vinicius Junior, I was actually expecting nothing less than him getting the uh, Ballon d'Or trophy yesterday, but I was surprised that the trophy had to go to Rodri. I can say confidently that Rodri is actually uh, the best because uh, Rodri won the best player in Europe as ahead of this Vinicius Bellingham. And in tennis, Yannick Sina has withdrawn from the Paris Masters a week after banking a 4.6 million euros prize in Saudi Arabia. The Italian cited a virus for his exit from the tournament where he was due to begin Wednesday. With sports update, Olumide Eguntola, NT News. And that's it nationwide. Many thanks for being a part of it. I am Olajide Bello.